Of course we'll accept our disbursement. Yes, thank you. Hello, Professor Bright here. Welcome back to the Sunless Skies. Where last episode we got our, well, first real captain killed. Technically our second captain, but the first one kind of died to the first thing that we found. So, well, doesn't really count now, does it? Hmm. <clears throat> And, uh, we did run into a bit of a bug in the process of trying to start our new captain before, but fortunately just restarting the game, like actually quitting out of the game, then reloading it, it fixes it. Or at least it did on a test captain. We'll see if that remains the case. I technically don't need to waste the... but... okay. Here I am accidentally hitting the F key again. Yeah, I know exactly what you found. You found New Winchester. We all know what New Winchester is and what it has. So we're probably just gonna go a little bit quickly through this. Although, hmm, I still have a lingering desire to save that captain, which I probably should deal with. Hi, you. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Your death is mandatory now. Ah, uh, come on. I need to be able to see where I am. Okay. Well, that was fun. Revenge for our first... Um... Eh. Bunch of Tackities tried to kill me? Really? Really, guys? Really? Okay, just scrap and scuttle it, I guess. Although... What kind of cargo are we talking about? A faintly luminescent cage. A light burns from within. Huh. The thing being transported in this cage did not survive the journey though they still glow faintly. Weird. I would have assumed souls, but apparently not. Apparently it's some specimen of wildlife in the high wilderness. I keep wanting to say neath, but no, it's high wilderness. What's the adverb or adjective? Adjective version? Yes, adjective version of the high wilderness. I guess just wild beasts? Eh, we'll go with that for now. Eh, eh, come on, stay, 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 good. Okay, Wolvesy Station. Hi, yes, we've spoken to you several times. Probably should have checked what actually happens if I decline that, but I didn't. Sorry. So, settlers, you might be different. Oh, huh. My friend has been sending me postcards from Port Avon, and I've never seen anywhere so quaint. You must take me there. You wipe your hand on your trousers after shaking his disquietingly sweaty hand. Is it, isn't it? Leaving the safety of New Winchester? Really going out into the world? Ah, <laughs> here we go then, eh? Yeah, I mean, the last person we successfully transported, and technically successfully transported, uh, well, they burst into hair and died, so... You'll be fine. Um, eh. Who wants to sign on? The station is clouded with smog. The soaring bridges are hidden behind a thick blanket of fog. Faces loom out of the gray. Hey, buddy! Yeah, anything's probably better than here, Captain. I'm pretty sure that's not the case, but sure, why not? You boost my stats and possibly give us a chance to see new sights. Hmm. I really hate that I can't see my sovereign situation here. Okay, I think it's under... Possessions, there. There we are, 100 sovereigns, and I have to spend half of them to repair the hull. Eh, why not? I mean, there's several reasons. That's effectively two barrels of fuel, I think? Well, regardless, we're going to ignore the fastidious inspector, because we've already chatted with her before. We're going to try not chatting with her this time. And I think we're going to be heading south... You know what? Yeah, southeast for now. Technically, everything's new, although there are only a few new ports. So, hmm. I'd say a few new ports. New ports being ones that we haven't already seen. At least one. The Stainrod Nature Reserve. Stainrod and someone else. Someone whose name I don't remember. Can't be bothered to remember. Hello. They really need to smooth out that transition. But, anyway, ignoring that, it is early access. Things are supposed to be a tad rough. Oh. Uh, I suspect that's Madeline's, but 
What's this, though? The thing that you probably should have found, because this looks a lot like Port Avon to me. Those words belong to Port Avon. And this civilization looks like it belongs to Port Avon. We might actually successfully transport somebody for once. Wow. Actually doing our jobs. Where exactly can I dock? Oh, hey, we found the village green. Ah, uh, there we are. Almost. And just go slide right on in. Good job. Behold a ruin of giants. Gargantuan blocks a jigsaw together. Furred with moss and whispering with orchards. A bucolic village nestles amongst them. Smoke coils daintily from the chimneys. A leisurely game of cricket unfolds on the village green. Disembark. A ramshackle dog juts into the sky beside a farmyard scattered with rusty locomotive parts, plating, piping, a chugging motor with its innards exposed. You would think that they would need the motor for something, but fair enough. A oily-faced, black-haired girl waves your locomotive in position. Welcome to Port Avon, she calls as you disembark. A rich knot of scents greets you, leaves and wood smoke, enriched by an infrequent but pungent intrusion of goat. Yes, we've visited this place before, but first of all, uh, drop off our settler. You're here. They've arrived at their destination. Whether or not they still wish to be here is another matter entirely. You made good time. They should reward you well. Oh. Interesting. So depending on how long I take, that might be what causes them to expire. I see. A colonist gives the settler a limp, awkward handshake. I'm the founder of our little welcoming committee, he says, and I should like to welcome you to Port Avon. May you find it a happy haven. The settler pauses beside you before disembarking. He goes to speak, but thinks better of it. He pays you and is off. Hmm. At the round table in New Winchester, you can inspire the next group of settlers. Good to know. Okay, so that's how I make money, essentially. Write our port report, of course. Were not for talk of smugglers and sky beasts, you could easily confuse this place for a village on the world you left behind. It's quite peaceful here, apart from some fuss over a newspaper delivery. Villagers frown and change the subject when you ask about it. Okay, so essentially that's going to stay the same. Didn't know if there might be some changed things, but, uh, the Cyclopean ruins. What palace was this? What giant king made his home here? And why did he abandon the vast stores of souls that the locals still quarry from beneath the stones? Perhaps you might risk a furtive excavation of your own. I might. Enjoy the picturesque surroundings. Hmm, sorry. Not one of the looming stones is quite square, yet they all slot together immaculately. What were these ruins before their fall? Even their bones are tall and stately, as the finest cathedrals of old France. What purpose did they serve in the past, plentiful days when their sun still shone? Good question. Conduct a nocturnal excavation. Port Avon's chief export is souls, poured from vest stores entombed within the ruins. Ah, 36% chance. Hmm. You'll need assistance, luck, and discretion. The locals would not approve. I mean... Well, damn. All right. All night you dig, prying up vast stones and peering into the dusty cracks for any sign of souls. There's nothing. Perhaps they were crushed. Perhaps other miners got here first. Heh. <sighs> well, enjoy the picturesque surroundings. That's where I am. Oh. Not alone. Your piece is interrupted by a whistling, a popular tune, appallingly executed. A painter is here. He has set his back to a towering arch, and is painting its reflection from a mirror set beside his easel. The mirror's glass is black, dulling the vibrant green of the moss and the scintillating hues of the sky. The truly picturesque requires a certain restraint, he explains, frowning irritably over his shoulder at the splendid view. This is trying rather too hard, don't you think? His presence has ruined the atmosphere, but the walk is not unpleasant. If you say so. Unfortunately, I think that we're going to be kicked out. Still, I want to try this one more time. Pity. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to just... Get on the way to somewhere else, by And all of a sudden, Newton's Three Laws kick in. So, I should probably, well... You know what, let's decline. 
You pay engineers to deal with that sort of thing. Her expression is pained, but she does not press the point. On your engine, in the sky, your word is law. Hmm. Yeah, the bat found nothing. We're still going south. Just out of curiosity. First, though. An unlikely hall? Could do... Oh, excuse me, what? Cryptic benefactor plus one. A nod, a wink. They'll be there when you need them. Condemned experiment plus one. Interesting. What about these smoggy streets? Ah, uh, yes, we've done this before as well. Well, let's say we were at home. The smog painted your lungs black, your knuckles were scarred, but it was honest. There were diamonds in the dirt. And this? Origin, urchin, you ran with a knotted sock. Once you raced barefoot across the rooftops of old London in the company of other unfettered young scoundrels. Hmm. Interesting. I really want to see how far that progression system goes, although obviously it's not going to happen, you know, anytime soon. Hi, thing. Well, oh, you're rushing off, I suppose I'll leave you be. You, however, I will not. You look like something useful. Or just the side of a battle. That could be the case as well. How far away are we? Eh, far enough. Oh, right, that other thing. Which is probably just Madeline's, if we're being honest. Still far enough away that I'm willing to take a look. Let's see what we just found. Which I probably could have just found by continuing going this direction. Oh, good. Well, that's new. I thought that was Hybris for a minute there. This is definitely new. Whether that's a good thing or not. Hmm. I mean, it's good in that we get to see new things, but, well, the old things we knew what we should expect. This seems cold, and cold is very bad. Frost filigrees the window, the crew shivers, a pipe splits in the cold. That is not ideal. So, where can I park? Um, O'Sullivan sight up. Ah. Get over there. Lustrum, excellent. Do we find an hour's mine? The prospector's quarter. The frantic, hustling heart of Lustrum, crammed with prospectors, peddlers, and purveyors of essential and occasionally legal services. Most businesses take place here, unless you're a dreamer seeking your fortune on the claim fields. Lustrum, what was once a pleasant small town on the Mother of Mountains, now runs on increasingly desperate dreams of riches. Mother of Mountains as in stone? Something I have to brush up on. Well. Was once a pleasant small town on the Mother of Mountains, now runs on increasingly desperate dreams of riches. Fools sell their futures for the chance to mine years from the mountain's frozen sides. Smarter minds sell pickaxes, supplies, and the promise of a warm bed at the end of a bitter day's... <laughs> a bitter's day work. Okay, you know, it's probably not stone, properly speaking, but the Mother of Mountains, that... That sounds familiar. Might not be, but... Hmm... Okay. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see... Wait, what? Attempt to climb the mountain. That doesn't seem like a good idea. Uh, let's go see what else we can do here. Write a port report, of course. Ours are the new gold and Albion in the Reach. While Lustrum's fortunes remain, it is of interest to many. So much for the quiet retirement village that used to be here. The rush of prospectors has ripped the civility from the place as efficiently as the geodes from the mountainside. The scars that remain are no less vivid. Fewer and fewer prospects return with the geodes of ours, and the cost of processing them off-site grows every day. Still, for now, Lustrum thrives and offers the promise of riches for any lucky or industrious miner willing to come and risk everything in the snow and the mud. Okay, so ours come in geodes. Interesting. 
Explore Lustrum. Uh, this port started as an enclave of well-off Londoners hoping to absorb the youthful energy of the mountain. Then the prospectors arrived. Your boots crunch through the snow, clean and bright, lacking the lingering sadness of London's ammonia suffused a laker. The townspeople nod politely to you, a distinguished visitor, but avert their eyes from the grizzled prospectors and get-rich-quick merchants who have taken over their slice of civilization on the mountain. They wait impatiently for a day when the mountain has nothing more to offer, and the uncouth invaders finally leave, hoping that something still remains when all of value has finally been plundered. Huh. Interesting. Hello. I mean, I do have the money. Seek a claim of your own. For safety reasons, all claimants must hire a our harker to escort them on the mountain. The our harkers are all agree on the importance of this. Hmm. Funny that. Stay close, friend, warns your our harker. He grins. Or not. You've paid already. He lights a vapor lamp, glowing purple like the gases of the nearby nebula. It occasionally sparks with a little flecks of green. Soon enough, the lamp is the only light, as you move out to the treacherous, mostly unclaimed edge of hedges of the mountain. Occasionally, he stops to sniff or to drag a foot through the snow and mud in what looks like a line. Finally, he seems satisfied. He shoots you a mostly toothless grin as he lights a cigarette. Reckon this has your name all over it. What you think? Good question. The terrain is rocky, occasional scrub pokes through the snow. A heather-like substance is known to be highly toxic and irritating to the skin. Oh. The snow is soft and fluffy. There are no signs of other miners this far away from town. Hmm. Can we do better, though? I mean, let's try. The good claims are running out quickly. This could get expensive. Attempt to climb the mountain? Really, that... That seems like your best move, huh? Okay. Uh, the Mother Mountains stretches on almost forever, from its snowy peak down through seemingly endless strata of lethal nebula gas. On the far side of its cliffs, the Windward Company's machines strip the rocky flesh from the mountain and cast its ore into the perpetual fire of their furnaces. Prospectors from Lustrum have to do everything the hard way, chip chipping away at their frozen hard-won claims in search of precious hours. This seems like a Bad idea, though. Attempting to climb the mountain. I just, I mean, it seems like a very bad idea. Let's go for it. What? Really? Really? Okay. The snow is deep and much of the mountain demands scaling cliffsides and clambering across treacherous ledges. There's no way to tell how long the climb is. Eventually, you claw up onto a ledge near the peak and sit. Exhausted, the air is too thin to keep going, even if you had any strength left. This is as close as you can get to the peak. The air is thin, but the view is majestic. From here, the reach stretches out before you in endless waves of purple and violet, occasionally broken by a flicker of gold deep within the clouds. Far below, Lustrum is little but a small yellow glow on a blanket of winter. I mean, I guess explore the singing caves, although I was seeking a claim just a moment. Wait, what? The mountain sings no more. Oh, this mountain is alive. Oh. Well, shit. Explore the singing caves. The lightest breeze passing through causes a sound like a soft whistle. The cave's music is considered a good omen by those in the town below. Half an hour into your explorations, the wind picks up. The cave fills with the sound of distant fluting. There's no tune to it, just a pleasant natural melody, like the echo of birdsong. Just as quickly, though, it turns sharp. Less birdsong, more bird prey to a ravenous cat. The atonal screech rocks the mountain, though by the time it leaves the caves, their unique acoustics have turned into turned it to into something soft. Your feet crunch against something, a shard of glass, red-tinted. Looking through one side, the world seems a burning inferno. From the other, all is well. Looking closer, part of the part of a glyph remains on the shard. Extremely precise work, though its function is alien to you. Perhaps there's someone in Lustrum who would know more. Ooh. Can I explore further? As you walk through the caves, your feet crunch on bits of loose stone or broken glass. Whichever route you take, it leads you through the mountain and to the other side, occasionally higher, usually lower. 
There seems no rhyme nor reason to the maze of tunnels. One wrong turn too many brings you back to where you started. Without some form of guide, the chance of finding anything of interest feels remote. I guess climb back down the mountain, it's a long way. Even a small slip could be fatal. So that guy just ate my... Sovereigns? Really? 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 Okay, that's mildly annoying. Um... Well... Let's visit the hang... The Hanged Man pub. An embossed plaque under the hastily painted sign proclaims this miner's pub as the former Empress's Grace guest house. Its once fine mahogany tables and chairs are now a little bit sawdust on the floor and a lingering smell in the fireplace. Well... Ah. Well, irritable miners jockey for space by insufficient fireplaces. They pay for the overpriced drinks with their dwindling coins or lowest quality hours. A few fortunates bear the mark of minor successes, the baby soft hands that come from regularly handling unseasoned hours. Huh. Well, uh, perch the figure in the corner. It sits wrapped in a dusty, disintegrating shroud, nursing a flagon that never goes to where its lips presumably are. Oh. The cloaked figure beckons to you, valuables for sale, it wheezes, its voice throaty and high-pitched. Exchange for buried time, yes, please. It offers unusual relics in exchange, or a few rusted coins that would barely buy transport to anywhere else. Talk to Mr. Pennies. Mr. Pennies as in one of the old masters of the bazaar, perhaps. Not sure, but... I mean, he fits the description. Talk to Mr. Pennies. The miners try to ignore it, but it must have some reason to bother setting up its stall here. Everything ends, the figure wheezes. Even law. For everything, a reckoning. Need help, need hours, postpone reckoning. Shadows with thistle ropes and broken wings, waiting on riverbank to catch final breath. Everything dies, must outlast. We trade, yes? Trade hours? We trade hours now, yes? Good quality merchandise. Fascinating. Mr. Pennies pushes a selection of trinkets across the table. A dried Corster bee's wing, a watchful curio, nothing special. Hmm, these little offerings have some promise, though. Ooh. I am very curious about you, Mr. Pennies. So the reckoning came to the bazaar, I'm assuming. Well, the masters of the bazaar. Interesting. Not that they didn't deserve it, of course, but still interesting. Visit Murgatroyd's Golden Tea Shop. Some come for the fine teas, others for the carefully prepared middle of folders underneath the counter. All agree that the scones are divine. Some spy work, you say? An oasis of London civility and culture in a town with little of either. Melusine Murgatroyd stands proudly behind the display of fresh scones and slightly yellowing cream buttons. At small wooden tables, successful prospectors and their significant others welcome themselves to the world of the nouveau riche with a spot of afternoon tea. Pinky fingers stand proud and erect from bone china cups covertly topped up with moonshine. Nice. Oh, how much? Just five? I could go for a lovely cup of tea. A reminder of proper civilization is a thing to be cherished, especially out here in the Reach. Oh. Melusine's maids hurry around, serving a clientele more used to bellowing at bartenders than sitting politely with exquisitely cut cucumber sandwiches. Eventually, it is your turn to be served. You're invited to choose your preferred blend. Empress's favor, the taste of home. Eleutherian gold, though. Looks like tea with the occasional sparkle. An in indulgence blend. Straight from the Blue Kingdom. I'm curious. A tea for the true connoisseur. It tastes of dust swept from the darkest corner of a sepulchre. It is best served with a drop of milk, ideally on the very edge of turning. You sip gently, between sips, a bite of sugared biscuit to take away the edge. Good. That's lovely. So the Blue Kingdom is blue as in dead. Well, speak to Melusine Murgatroyd, I suppose. She single-handedly runs both the family business and the family business. Unless you count the small gaggle of overworked and underpaid maids, which Melusine does not. Lovely. 
Smelling faintly of burnt hair, she tinkers with the latest invention intended to be her ticket out of both this no-horse town and her father's control. Eyebrows, she confirms, are a small price to pay for scientific progress. This is a woman after my own heart. Look at her inventions. Her workshop has slowly taken over the back room of the salon. Maya Sang glows with pride as you examine her mostly untested inventions. The clockwork lens array that offers superhuman levels of telescopic sight, provided you can assert all six sharp brass hooks under your eyelids. Thank you. The internal combustion privy, ideal for handling unpleasant waste products and warming whatever's left of your house after the inevitable explosion. An automated pickaxe capable of striking Earth seven times a second. Maya Sang nods, irritated. Pity about the minor bone-shattering issue. Well. The only thing she won't let you poke at is a twisted arrangement of glassware and electricity in the corner. That's not mine, not entirely. Still working on that. Complicated, you know if you know. If you don't, I shouldn't say. Hmm. Intriguing. Show Mel you sign this ambiguous shard. She's the only one in town who might have an idea about it. Is that what I think? Of course it is. Where'd you find it? On the mountain? Mel you sign rushes to her workbench, rummaging for tools. You know what it is? Is what it is, it? Typo. The antithesis of light and law. Light is law, you know. But why would there be pieces of the science here? Maybe, yes, I'll need a few things. Nothing too difficult for you to find. The red science, I see. Which I should have just guessed at. Oh, dear me. Bronze wood. Carefully packed crate of munitions. And stained glass, you say. Well, then. Hmm. Perhaps not, just yet. Although we'll have to note that down. One more time. Munitions, bronzewood, glass. Uh, visit Sweet Jane's County House. Why not? Someone has to assist the miners with their finances. Terrible choice in my opinion, but fair enough. A little accountancy firm snuggled in the snowy drifts. Sweet Jane oversees everything herself, the transference of funds, the balance of probabilities, the transport of commodities, the termination of contracts. She is swaddled in a monstrously ugly red scarf, huddled behind her desk. One hand in a fraying glove fiddles with her abacus, the other is held above a little coal fire. Her one good eye focuses on you, her mouth twitches upward. Ooh. Ooh. <gasps> Ooh. Listen to Sweet Jane's offer. She asks you here for a reason. She stands up and limps to her window, pulling back the threadbare curtain. Snow batters a thin window pane. The shadow of the mountain is all but lost in the blizzard. The offices of the Windward Company are visible by lantern light. I was raised by the company, you know. Children are fast workers. You understand. Her fingers drum on the window sill. Such a waste. Where they see profit and asset, I see resource and value. Where I see men, they see labor. Where they see time, they see chains to bind us. Where they see death in the skies, I see victory. She turns to you and smiles. Bring me nameplates, torn from London's ships. I will see you adequately compensated. Delightful. We could do this. We most certainly can. Ooh. Ooh. ooh, ooh, ooh. So many things. Uh, perhaps not, though. Not just yet. You understand. I visit the Windward Company. Tensions between the company and the Tackities grow day by day. The poison air coming from Windward's processing factory is only the latest insult. The Windward Company was not the first to begin harvesting the mountain, but no other came in harder or faster once the hours were detected. The company began by bribing prospectors to sign over successful claims, and even offering to help process the lucky prospectors' hours in their huge factory ovens. But netty men are cheap, and big sticks even cheaper. As the claims began running out, things changed quickly. Now the whole facility is out of bounds. The guard is uninterested in any business you might have. No, she does not want to know who you are or care who you may be friends with. The branch is a closed facility. Certainly it is closed to you. Very well, then. About these claim fields, though, I... Uh, yes, search for a claim. Conditions are harsh. The mountain seems to fight your every step. Ropes left behind by the prospectors coil around your ankles. Old boxes of supplies loiter under the snow, ready to trip you. It's almost impossible to tell the difference between one patch of land and another, never mind the value of individual claims. What you need is an hour harker, advises a passing hour harker. He grins, he doesn't have many teeth, but those that remain are capped with gold. 
Come find me in town if you want, or not. There's always more of you showing up, eh? Yeah, see, I... Hmm. I kind of probably shouldn't do this. I really shouldn't do this. But I'm doing it. Except I can't. Why can't I do this? Okay. Yeah, I guess reject this claim. The claim site sits on the edge of town, surrounded by abandoned tools and well-dug holes. The hour harker looks innocent when pressed about how many others have tried their luck here. Probably should have gone with the 48% chance, but, uh... Well, I think I've spent enough of my money here. Thank you very much. Although, let's get some more fuel just to, you know, stand a chance. Uh, a place we could have sold munitions to buy fuel. No, nope, you know what? No. Not going to worry about that. That was an old captain. He's dead. We aren't. And we have new goals. Multiple new goals, in fact. But they are all for the future. For now, thank you for your time. Know the like, comment, and subscribe buttons below. Use them responsibly, and I shall see you all soon. Bye-bye.